Republicans in Ohio have just now enacted two laws that make it harder to vote in Ohio. The Republican-controlled House passed the bills along party lines Wednesday, and today, Governor John Kasich signed them into law. These were bills passed by the Senate in November of last year. Senate Bill 238 eliminates six days of early voting to 29 days, down from 35. And the significance of that is that those six days are referred to as the Golden Week, when Ohio citizens can both register to vote and cast an in-person absentee ballot. Senate Bill 205 alters the process by which absentee ballots are mailed. More on that in a moment. The measures will take effect in 90 days after the primary election, and the timing here is interesting. Because the last time Ohio Republicans tried to pull a similar stunt was during the 2012 presidential election. But the Obama re-election campaign filed a complaint, and a federal judge ordered Ohio to allow early voting on the three days prior to the election. The judge ordered Republican Secretary of State John Husted not to enforce a state law Republicans had pushed that closed that window to anyone but members of the military and their families. So now, having lost that, having been caught red-handed in the glare of a presidential campaign under the relative cover of an off-year election, Republicans have pushed through another restriction on early voting, counting on limited press attention. Bear in mind that Republicans nationwide are usually clamoring on about voter ID laws, which they justify by way of the mythos they've created of an alternate universe with rampant election fraud. It is on that thin reed voter ID laws are often hung. Laws that are obviously and manifestly about reducing the amount of people voting. But here, here we have the good Republicans of Ohio really dispensing with that kind of pretext. They are just reducing early voting because, well, because they can. As for eliminating that golden week, the bipartisan Ohio Association of Election Officials has contended that allowing people to register and vote on the same day makes it difficult to properly validate those voters. Democratic gubernatorial candidate Ed Fitzgerald said, quote, I don't know what the problem this is allegedly solving. They want to try to make it harder for certain folks in this state to vote, and everyone sees through it. Joining me now is Ohio Democratic State Representative Alicia Reese. A representative, is there any evidence yes. to indicate that there was a problem with the Golden Week that has now been eliminated? Was there some evidence of fraud? Was there some evidence of any kind of systemic malfeasance or abuse? No, there was uh, no evidence in that regard. The only evidence uh, that is present is that more people uh, participated in this last election, more people came out to vote, uh, students, uh, low-income families, uh, women, African Americans and other minorities came out to vote. And that is the problem that the Republicans are trying to solve. Uh, the governor's spokesperson, uh, Rob Nichols, noted that the changes to absentee voting rules will make them more uniform. And also said about uh, getting rid of the early voting, that, w that, that week of early voting, Ohio has more early voting than 40 other states after we sign these bills. So what are you complaining about? <laughs> You know, we are in a, a war on uh, voting rights, and uh, Ohio is uh, ground zero. Uh, we've got two major things that has to happen. One, we have to have new leadership at the Secretary of State office, and that's why we're excited about the candidacy of Senator Nina Turner. Second, we've got to have a voter bill of rights, uh, because as you can see, this is uh, just a few bills, but we've had over 15 that's been introduced. Uh, more on the way, uh, a different voter suppression or disenfranchisement type of bill that's being introduced on a weekly or monthly basis. Uh, and it's time now for the uh, citizens to have an opportunity to be involved in the democracy by putting a voter bill of rights in the Constitution. And so while the uh, governor was signing these uh, terrible uh, bills into law, uh, we were on the streets with petitions uh, this weekend to get uh, a voter bill of rights in the Ohio Constitution. And we need everyone from across the country, because if we don't fight back, uh, they will push us back. And so we have to be as relentless as uh, Republicans are to take away our voting rights. We have to be just as relentless to put voting rights in the Constitution where it's permanent. And so that's what we're doing here hmm. uh, in Ohio as we are at ground zero. Uh, Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights conducted a study looking at a Cuyahoga County map from 2012. Uh, that was a study of the 2008 returns. And it shows that the limit, how the limits to early voting uh, uh, work and you see the places where they most impact voters are in the places that are disproportionately uh, African-American. That is not an accident to your mind. No, it's not. And that's why I'm president of the Ohio Legislative Black Caucus, and we have 
been working with a coalition of progressive Ohioans uh, to, to fight back because there is a movement, whether it's uh, the targeting of billboards that were placed in uh, urban and African-American uh, communities, one actually across the street from where I live, whether it was a polling location, which was in my district that was predominantly African-American, where it took two years for the votes to be counted in a judicial race. Uh, this is serious. Uh, there is a war on, on voting rights, uh, and we have to fight back. And that's why we believe the only way to do this is to have a voter bill of rights that we can put in the Ohio Constitution and let the everyday person, all uh, citizens of Ohio, have a voice uh, at the polls. And that's what, that's what we plan to do here in Ohio. Do you think there's any price to be paid uh, politically for this? Is this the kind of thing that, 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 that obviously there are certain voters that are going to be very attuned to this, the folks that are watching our network right now and folks that you're in contact with, but do you think there's a, there's a broader political price to be paid for this for the Republicans pushing this through? I think so, because when you talk about voting rights, you're talking about uh, people who died, uh, black and white in this country who sacrificed, who stood up, who had dogs turned on them, blood on the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Uh, this is not just an issue. Uh, this is this is this goes deeper to the individual person. Uh, this is the lifeline uh, to democracy. And so this is serious. And, and certainly there's a price to be paid. As we, can, as we know, Dr. King is in the grave right now because there was a price to be paid. And so we must stand up and we must be relentless. It, it, you know, they keep bringing bills back and forth. We have called for a moratorium on all future bills hmm. uh, for voting rights until the people, we the people, have an opportunity uh, to stand up, fight back, and have a voice at the polls on a voter bill of rights. Ohio Democratic State Representative Alicia Reese, thanks for your time tonight. Thank you for having me. Coming up earlier this week, a Republican congressman accused Democratic Senator Kirsten Gillibrand of basically using a bill she introduced that would help end sexual assault in the military as a self-promotion tool. Well, Senator Gillibrand will be here to respond next.